Well, welcome back to the second part of the first segment of Shabbat services for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. This is January 9th, 2021. And in the Hebrew calendar, it is Tibet 25 in the year 5781. We are in the Torah portion. And we are beginning chapter 3 of Exodus. Angel of Adonai in a burning bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, who was also named Raul, remember, in, in the previous chapter, the priest of Midian. So he led the flock to the farthest end of the wilderness, coming to the mountain of God, Horeb. Then the angel of Adonai appeared to him in a flame of fire from within a bush. So he looked and saw the bush burning with fire, yet it was not consumed. Moses thought, I will go now and see this great sight. Why is the bush not burnt? When Adonai saw that he, he turned to look, he called out to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He answered, Hineni, which in Hebrew means, here am I. Then he said, come no closer, take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then Adonai said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their slave masters, for I know their pains. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them out of that land into a good and large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, into the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Now, behold the cry of Benaiah Israel has come to me. Moreover, I have seen the oppression that the Egyptians have inflicted on them. Come now, I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people Benaiah Israel out from Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring Benaiah Israel out of Egypt? So he said, I will surely be with you, so that will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on, the, on this mountain. But Moses said to God, Suppose I go to Benaiah Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, What is his name? What should I say to them? God answers, answered Moses, I am who I am. Then he said, you are to say to Benai Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, you are to say to Benai Israel, Adonai, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever and the name by which I should be remembered from generation to generation. Go now. Gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, Adonai, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have been paying close attention to you and have seen what is done to you in Egypt. So I promise I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey, they will listen to your voice, so you will go, you, along with the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt and say to him, Adonai, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Now please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness, so we may sacrifice to Adonai our God. Nevertheless, I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go, except by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will do in the midst of it. After that, he will let you go. Then I shall grant these people favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. So it will happen that when you go, you will not leave empty handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and the woman who lives in her house for silver and gold jewelry and clothing. You will put them on your sons and your daughters. So you will plunder the Egyptians. Objections and excuses. Then Moses said, but look, 
They will not believe me or listen to my voice. They will say, Adonai has not appeared to you. So Adonai said to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he said. Then he said, cast it on the ground. When he cast it on the ground, it became a serpent. So Moses fled from before it. Then Adonai said to Moses, stretch out your hand and take it by the tail. So he put out his hand, laid hold of it, and it became a staff in his hand. This is so that they may believe Adonai, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has appeared to you. Adonai also said to him, now put your hand within your cloak. So he put his hand inside, and when he took it out, his hand had za'arot, which is leprosy, white as snow. Then he put, then he said, put your hand back into your cloak. So he put his hand back in, and when he took it out, it was restored again as the rest of his skin. Then he said, if they do not believe you or listen to the voice of the first sign, they will believe the message of the latter sign. But if they do not believe even these two signs, nor listen to your voice, you are to take the water of the river and pour it onto the dry land. The water which you take out of the river will become blood on the ground. But Moses said to Adonai, Adonai, I am not a man of words, not yesterday, nor the day before, nor since you have spoken to your servant, because I have a slow mouth and a heavy tongue. So Adonai said to him, Who made man's mouth, or who makes a man Mute or deaf, seeing or blind, it is not I, Adonai. Is it not I, Adonai? Now go. I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. He's basically telling Moses, you know, I made you. I made you. I made your mouth. Um, I'm the one, and I will, I will teach you what to say. I will put those words into your mouth. But he said, please, please send it to another hand. Then the anger of Adonai was kindled against Moses. So he said, in fact, Aaron the Levite is your brother. I know that he can speak well. Moreover, he is on his way to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth. I will be with your mouth and with his and teach you what to do. He will be your spokesman to the people so that he may act as a mouthpiece for you. And it will be as if you were as God for him. Now then, you must take this step in your hand to do the signs. Moses returns to Egypt. So Moses went, returned to his father-in-law Jethro, and said to him, Please let me go, so I may return to my kinsmen who are in Egypt and see whether they are still alive. Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Then Adonai said to Moses and Midian, Go, return to Egypt, for all the men that sought your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, set them on a donkey, and returned to the land of Egypt. Moses took the staff of God in his hand. Adonai said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do all the wonders before Pharaoh that I have put in your hand. Still, I will harden his heart, and he will not let the people go. You are to say to Pharaoh, this is what Adonai says, Israel is my son, my firstborn. So I have said to you, let my son go that he may serve me, but you have refused to let him go. Behold, I will slay your son, your firstborn. It happened along the way at a lodging place that Adonai met him and sought to kill him. Bezipra took a flint, cut off the foreskin of her son, and threw it at her feet, saying, You are surely a bridegroom of blood to me. She said, A bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Then he let him alone. Now Adonai said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron all the words of Adonai with which he had been sent along with, all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses said, Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of Benaiah Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that Adonai had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. So the people believed. When they heard that Adonai had remembered Benaiah Yisrael and had seen their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Pharaoh would not let Israel go. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, This is what Adonai, God of Israel, says, Let my people go so that they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. 
the Pharaoh said, Who is Adonai that I should listen to his voice and let Israel go? I do not know Adonai, and besides, I will not let Israel go. They answered, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so we may sacrifice to Adonai our God, or else he may strike us with pestilence or, or with a sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Why do you, Moses and Aaron, make the people break loose from their work? Go to your labors. Then Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now so numerous, yet you would have them rest from their labors? Then on the same day Pharaoh commanded the slave masters of the people and the foremen, saying, You are not to give the people any more straw to make bricks as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves, but impose on them the quota of bricks that they made previously. Don't reduce it, for they are lazy. That's why they cry out, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let even heavier work be laid upon the men, so that they must labor, paying no attention to deceptive words. Then the slave masters of the people went out along with their officers, and they spoke to the people, saying, This is what Pharaoh says, I will not give you straw. Go and get straw for yourselves, wherever you can find it, for they will, there will be no reduction of your work. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw, but the slave masters pressured, saying, Fulfill your work, your daily amount, just as when there was straw. Moreover, the foremen of Benai Israel, whom Pharaoh's slave masters had set over them, were beaten and asked, Why haven't you met your quota of bricks, both yesterday and today like before? The foremen of Benai Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you deal this way with your servants? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks, and look, your servants are beaten, but it is your own people at fault. But he said, lazy, you're lazy. That's why you were saying, let us go and sacrifice to Adonai. So go now and work. No straw will be given to you, but you must deliver the quota of bricks. So the foremen of Benai Israel saw that they were in trouble when they were told you were not to reduce the number of bricks from day to day. And they met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them as they came from Pharaoh. So they said to them, may Adonai look on you and judge, because you have made us a stench in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, putting a sword in their hand to kill us. So Moses returned to Adonai and said, Adonai, why have you brought evil on these people? This is why you sent me. Ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought evil on these people. You have not delivered your people at all. How will Pharaoh listen? Adonai said to Moses, Now you will see what I am going to do to Pharaoh. By the way, a strong hand will let them go and drive them out of this land. And that is the end of the Torah reading. We're going to recap on this. Um, if that last segment isn't, it doesn't ring a bell to where we are right now, and God is on the throne, no matter what is going on in this secular world here, I, you know, I, I really think that we need to really focus on God being on the throne and looking for those miracles and those signs and those wonders. And if we recap on Exodus, and we go through this, we begin, we begin Exodus um, with speaking about um, the descent of Jacob's family into Egypt. Um, and we know the story of Joseph and Joseph passes away. But now there's a new Pharaoh that has not. Uh, does not remember Joseph, does not remember the relationship that the other Pharaoh had with Joseph and the children of Israel. And he is, he is fearful, actually, um, over the children of Israel. The Egyptians are intimidated by the Israelites' massive growth. And they, the Pharaoh says that they're too numerous and they could join forces with Egypt's enemies. So uh, he approached a three-tiered, um, uh, his approach was three-tiered. Slavery seemed to be ineffective in stemming the growth rate. So then, then he decided to try to, uh, try to um, kill the male infants at birth. Um, that um, did not work either because at first the midwives were, um, the midwives were not, uh, listening and God blessed them 
Um, and then he ordered all male infants to be thrown into the Nile River. So Pharaoh actually tricked the Israelites into becoming slaves at first, grateful for everything their host country had done for them. The Israelites agreed to join uh, a building project, which which um, was supposed to be between Israelites and Egyptians. And um, the Egyptians stopped participating in the efforts, but um, then um, the voluntary project became mandatory. So... Um, what happened um, as we continue, Moses is born. We see that um, his mother actually hid him as long as she could possibly hide him. And then when she could hide him no more, she wanted to save his life and put him in a little basket, a waterproof basket down the Nile River. And of course, he is discovered by Pharaoh's daughter. And of course, we as we read, um, Moses' sister, which we'll later learn is Miriam, um, followed that little basket and she saw Pharaoh's daughter um, discover the baby and she offered to find a nurse, a, a wet nurse for him, which was actually Moses' mother. So Moses' mother actually, um, actually took care of him until he was weaned and then um, she had to give him over to um, Pharaoh's daughter who took him as her son and named him Moses because she drew him out of the water. That's that's what it means. Um, so he was named and raised by the daughter of Pharaoh in the Egyptian palace. And um, he actually grew there to adulthood. Um, he, he He actually learned and studied and um, he ended up leaving that life and he had a very good, rich life. Um, but he, he discovered who he was. Um, he saw how his people were being mistreated and he ended up killing an Egyptian and burying him in the sand. And there was two Hebrews that saw that, confronted him the next day. Um, the word got out to Pharaoh. Um, they were going to turn on him. Um, so Moses ended up fleeing Egypt. Now, it is said that, you know, Moses lived for 120 years. So by the time he is actually uh, fleeing Egypt, I believe he might, this, this is when he's like 40 years old. So he flees Egypt. Um, he goes um, to Midian and meets up with um, the the shepherd uh, actually the shepherdess um, the the poor and her sisters who are attending to her, her father's flocks and um, these other shepherds are, are actually trying to chase them away and Moses comes to their defense and that is how um, Moses ends up um, meeting um, Jethro his father-in-law and and he gives him Zipporah his wife and he has two sons. Uh, from Zipporah, and he's living there in Midian, and um, he gets called, um, actually, of God, and he fights it, <laughs> of course. Um, so uh, Moses actually settled into his life of exile, um, and during this time, um, those that want to seek his life are still alive, and so is Pharaoh. Um, and the Israelites are suffering under oppression and bondage, and um, God observes this and decides the time has now come, and he is selected to ra ra raise up the person that he is going to deliver them from bondage. Um, and God raises up people, leaders. Um, God is the one that raises up people, not man. And God selected Moses. So Moses had taken over herding his father-in-law's sheep. And one day um, he, he was confronted by an angel and saw this burning bush that was burning but was not consumed by fire. And God got Moses' attention. However, 
<laughs> Moses is saying to God, well, no, not me. I don't speak well. And uh, Moses is saying, did, not, did I not create your mouth? Did I not create you? Uh, you know, am I not the God who has done these things? Um, and I will put those words into your mouth. But he continued to to uh, try to run from his calling, and 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 God was kind of angry with him. And he finally said, "Look, I will let you um, let Aaron be your spokesman, and he will speak for you." So it's really fascinating the exchange that Moses has with God, trying to argue his way out of the job that God has for him. Um, so anyway, he does promise that Aaron will accompany him. So, you know, the other, the other part of this is God's instruction to tell, uh, Moses that he needs to remove his sandals for he is standing on holy ground. Um, he also showed him signs and wonders uh, and what to use, uh, when he is going to confront Pharaoh. You know, he turned the staff into a serpent. He turned his hand into, you know, had leprosy on his hand. Um, and um, he also uh, told him to tell the people, I am sent you. And they would understand. So Moses asked his father-in-law's blessing to go back to Egypt. He gets it. He takes his 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 wife and his sons. Um, it's you know, on the way. Uh, Back to Egypt, Moses and his family stop overnight at an inn, and while there, God sought to, dis to, to, to kill Moses, and his quick-thinking wife, Zipporah, saves him by swiftly circumcising their second son. So this episode actually highlights the significance of ritual circumcision in Jewish law. Abraham is commanded to circumcise himself at the age of 99, and all subsequent descendants at the age of eight days in Genesis as we read previously. Now, also, as Moses is going back to Egypt, he is he is reassured that those that sought to kill him are, are dead. Pharaoh, the Pharaoh was dead. That, that Pharaoh actually was dead, and those that sought to kill him. Um, Moses and Aaron arrive in Egypt, and Aaron met him along the way, and they spoke about what was going to be done, and then they went before Pharaoh, and um, and they went before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh refuses to acknowledge God, and instead he increases uh, Benaiah Israel's workload. Um, but God was hardening his heart, and he was actually showing um, showing how evil he really was. Um, and, and he increased the workload of the people, and and became harsh and har even harsher and more cruel. So this devastated Moses because the people came to them and said, and said, you know, now that you've come, you've made it even worse for us. So Moses was devastated. He went to God, complained to God that he should have never been sent. But God assured him that now you will see what I will do. Um, you know, just when you think that all is lost, if it's the will of God, God will move. Um, and I think we are about to see that in our own world, actually. And those who are in the will of God and have faith in God, uh, lean into God, you know, um, because he is our shalom in a world of chaos. But he will show his might and his will. Because God is always on the throne, no matter what is going on in this secular world. This world is temporary. It is going to pass, and no one can take their treasures with them. Um, but again, you will you know, choose this day whom you will serve, because it is going to affect you for eternity. Um, so um, that is how we ended uh, the Torah portion. And I'm going to... Um, Actually, we're going to end this with prayer and take a short break and come back. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your Torah. Thank you for this lesson this week and to show, you know, what you're about to do. You are a mighty God. You are a creator. You are in, in control of everything. We are just mere human beings. We thank you 
for this tour portion. We thank you for all that you are for us and that you stand by us 100% no matter what. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, Amen and Amen.